Jane, I want to start with the UK data first of all. It makes grim reading. Does the pound have any business being in the 130 range against the dollar? Of course, the reason that the pound is in the 130 range is largely for dollar weakness. I think we get a different uh, look on, on sterling if we look at against against the euro. And now it is a little bit back below that 90 level, but actually in the recent weeks, it's been really hovering above 90. Now, if we look at that chart, the euro sterling chart back to the referendum, the Brexit referendum in 2016, we see that it spent very little time above that 90 level. And yet in recent weeks, it's been up there quite a lot. So in my mind, that suggests that sterling is still really quite a vulnerable currency, still very much focused on not just the UK economy, but also political risk, the Brexit story, uh, and, and, and also Scottish independence, something else uh, that could be uh, attracting more attention for sterling in the coming months. So I think sterling is still vulnerable. I think we still see that in Euro sterling. And I think cable is perhaps a little bit of a false indicator, very much a function of dollar weakness. OK, well, let's talk about that dollar. You think uh, the talk of the dollar's demise is significantly overdone. Why? Well, um, first of all, I, I'd say that, yes, we have got weakened dollar fundamentals. We have got st st uh, strengthened euro fundamentals, uh, and namely, of course, the recovery fund and also uh, really what the ECB has done in recent months to, to really push back on and talk of fragmentation. Both those fundamentals are really improving the story for the euro. But for the dollar, yes, we have got some weakened fundamentals too. We've got uh, the real yield story. Uh, that's obviously going down. The Fed's done an awful lot, really, in, in terms of uh, policy measures to, to weaken the dollar. But beyond these sort of fundamentals, these very short-term fundamentals, I certainly would not be in the camp to say that the dollar's demise is over. If we're talking about, you know, which currency is going to be dominant in the in the, in the global payment system, it is the dollar. If we're talking about uh, the, the, the reserve system, it is the dollar. And now, there's a very interesting piece of research from, from the BIS, uh, which was published in, in around about uh, December. And they were talking about invoicing. Now, we know that invoicing for the dollars is really dominant. And I found a piece of research from Eurostat, which just said that in 2018, half of all Im imports into the, the euro system were in dollars, denominated in dollars. Now, we can assume that that's even more in emerging markets. And what the BIS said is that what's really important for reserves is the invoicing currency for, for trade. So as long as a country does a lot of dollar trade, the chances are that its reserves are going to be very predominant in, in dollars too. And therefore, right. what's really important for the dollar is the fundamentals of the currency, not necessarily for the US itself. Jane, I look at so many different currency pairs and they seem like a reversion to the mean or somewhere in the vicinity of trend from whatever the trend was before, whatever the big move was before. If we've seen all the excitement, is there a big move ability here or do you just think everything seems narrow after we've seen this reversion to the mean? Well, you know, to be honest, I think the moves that we've seen, particularly in a currency pair like euro dollar, have been really quite exceptional compared with, say, the volatility that we saw last year. I think in, in just, you know, a month or so, it, it, it did everything that it had done in the second half of, of last exactly. year. So huge amounts of volatility. That's not particularly normal. So I think we have had a huge amount of, of repositioning in the market already. And that's another reason why I, I wonder if this is now a little bit overextended. We might have to wait till September to see proper liquidity and therefore that you know proper direction but i i am worried right. that the move is, is overextended at this point gold trades off the real yield the inflation adjusted yield folks and right now that 10-year statistic in america is in eight basis points that's a big move from the huge plunge that we saw at very low negative real yields in america do currencies trade off the real yield well, I think they do, but of course it's all relative. And when we see a currency, we've got to compare it with what the <clears throat> excuse me, what the real yield is elsewhere. Sometimes I think this can be a little bit of a, a mistake that commentators can make in terms of looking at the dollar. They look at the U.S. fundamentals and say, oh, you know, the Fed's cutting interest rates, uh, yields are moving in one direction in the U.S., therefore it's going to impact the dollar. But what we've got to look at is what's happening elsewhere as well. Now, inflation or, or perhaps a lack of inflation is going to be a massive massive theme, you know, over the next uh, two, five years, et cetera. And this is going to be really important for what happens to yields, what happens to central bank policy, and of course, therefore, what happens to currencies. But right now, I think for some currencies, it could be a little bit of a race to, to the bottom. Nobody particularly wants a strong currency when, when there's no inflation. And, and this could really be uh, demonstrated perhaps in, in, in central bank policy in, in the next few years.